So just a heads up before I get into the video, uh, there are some mild spoilers for the Tomb of Annihilation coming up in this video. Uh, be warned! So if you're going to be playing it, you might not want to watch it. I don't know. It's up to you. In this Dungeons & Dragons story, the players were mauling their way through the Tomb of Annihilation, toward the bottom, where Asirak and his soulmonger was. The place was a mega dungeon, and we were going through it at a rate of three sessions per floor. So, we hit the 13th week and they just made it to the 5th floor. Normally with most modules, the well-written ones at least, I can kind of flip through them a little bit ahead of time and then just sort of wing it as we're going along with the session. I think it's unrealistic to expect people to memorize all the information recited perfectly from memory like it's an open book test. The good modules, you can just glance down, flip through a room, and in a second or two describe it without interrupting the flow of the game. That being said, there's no way I could do that for level 5 of the Tomb of Annihilation. Not because it was badly written. No, 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 no. It was well made. It's just because level 5 was probably the most complex puzzle I've ever had to run. In the puzzle, it involves these rooms. They're in the shape of pentagons. And they're attached to each other and affixed to gears. And when one of the rooms rotates, the other one rotates as well, opening up and closing certain paths. The only way I could wrap my head around how it worked was to print out tiled pentagons and just lay them out there on the sheet just to simulate the puzzle. Uh, now, uh, <clears throat> I know this sounds surprising, but I actually went into the session not knowing how to solve it. But I knew that I have smart and intelligent players that would be able to figure this out. Because I certainly can't. Getting to that level, the group had traveled down a long spiral staircase to a cave that burrowed even deeper under the ground, like a grave. As one of the characters made his way to the landing, I had him roll a die. Inside of his head, he heard a voice say, Hmm, interesting. It's been a long, long while. And then it goes silent. And he has this feeling like there's something down here, something dark, that's watching him. Wandering through the dungeon, the group started getting assaulted by haunting images and phantoms. Eventually, they establish a telepathic link with this entity. Why, hello there, young one. Ah, uh, hello. We're just passing through to get to the next floor. Ah, oh, that might be a little difficult. You see, you have entered into my lair. I am the guardian that is here to stop you from attacking the soul manga. I am looking forward to crushing you under my flabby tentacle. For you see, one day, myself and my kind will rise up and defeat even the gods. But until all the pieces are in place, we wait in darkness. Over time, they discover that they are dealing with an Aboleth. An Aboleth is a very, very ancient evil from a time the world forgot. A powerful monster, and one of my favorite villains in D&D. These creatures existed before the arrival of the gods in the primordial earth, and were worshipped by mortals. They enslaved the races of olds until the gods arrived and drove them away into the dark, dark depths of the oceans and caves beneath the earth. Each Aboleth has the memories of its ancestors that came before it, and whenever they eat someone, they absorb their memories as well. So it is a hyper-intelligent creature with the collective minds of thousands of people. In an Aboleth's lair, they can scry through any water within a mile and manifest phantom illusions to attack the players. They can also read their subjects' minds, find out what they want, and, and taunt them with giving it, which is how they made worshippers on the surface of old. In addition, they're nearly impossible to kill, because when they die, they travel to the elemental plane of water, where a new body reforms. Also, if players encounter its viscous ooze, they run the risk of being charmed and become enslaved by it. After all the encounters, the group decided that they had to take this aboleth down once and for all. They traveled out to the underground lake where it dwelt. They cast their buff spells and prepared what they needed. And for no reason in particular, I had one of the players make a roll, looked at it, and said under my breath, Oh my god, they're gonna be so pissed off. What? Oh, nothing, nothing, it's fine. Everything's fine. So the players take the boats out onto the black water. Stretching out in all directions, below and above and beyond, is the darkness. As they travel out, there is something, a colossal creature that moves under the surface, 
buffeting the boats backwards and forwards in its wake. Rising out from the depths, this massive figure, its tentacle raises up and it starts waving to you guys. Hi guys, how's it going? Yeah, I don't really get a lot of new friends down here. How how is your how's your day going? Uh pretty good. Pretty good. No complaints. We're looking for um uh an abolith right now. No, you you were looking for me? Well how convenient that I'm uh uh me here. Uh, yeah, we came down because we heard there was a monster down here that we had to fight. Oh, no, a monster? That's terrible. The, by the way, are there, like, you know, another abolith down here by any chance? Nope, that's just me. By myself. I'm all alone. But no one here. They call me Whimsy. Insight check, several of them shout, and the players roll insight. <sighs> when they do that... I pick the book up, and I start reading it to them. The abolith that guards level 5 of the dungeon is not actually quite right up in the head, and has a split personality. One personality is aggressive and combative. The other personality is that of a small, curious child. Every time they interacted with the abolith, I had them roll chance, and it was a 50-50 shot if they were going to get nice abolith or murder abolith. This entire time, I was building up this big fight for the Abolith, going like, rawr, I will crush you. And whenever they talked to it through telepathy, I had them roll. They got the evil one. But no, when it came time to the big fight, they got lucky or unlucky and rolled the other personality. You're coming out here to fight a scary monster. Wow, you guys are really cool. So is there anything else in the waters we need to be careful about? Hmm. Well, I mean... I've heard people talking about how they sometimes see something in, in these waters that, that's really big with sharp teeth and tentacles. That sounds really, really scary. Is he just describing himself? Yep, he's just talking about rumors he's heard of himself. Hey, uh, Whimsy, do you think you could help us out with this gear puzzle over here? Well, sure, yeah, I, I just love helping people out. Also, here's some treasure I found in the bottom. Hope it helps. Okay, uh, thanks, Whimsy. Do, do you think we should fight it? No, no, we're not, no. Well, he might try and kill us later. No, no, he's fresh as... I love the players know. You know, honestly, I thought you guys just might encounter the evil one the entire time and not even know about his other personality. They told me, you know, that could have gone over so much worse if we had had the reverse and met the nice Abolith the whole time and then at the last minute switched over to murder Abolith. Wow, I'm having so much fun talking with you guys. You should come out on the lake. We could have a lot of fun. Murder! So, did we get any experience points for defeating the Abolith? Uh, I don't really know about that. Technically, you guys didn't really defeat it. If anything, Whimsy successfully charmed everyone in the party. So... I think he should get the experience points for defeating you guys. Oh, well, look at that. He leveled up. That's nice. But the players ultimately decided not to fight him, leaving him alone on level five of the tomb. So there he is, waiting in the darkness for his next victim. Our friend!